it's time for an update on my balancing robot. As you can see, uh, I think I haven't shown this one before. This is a new version. Well, it's two years old, but it's smaller than a previous version that I've shown on YouTube. Uh, the advantage of this smaller version is that it, well, it's more fun, as I will show later. One issue that I would like to tackle in this video is that sometimes uh, the robot it, it loses steps, the stepper motor loses steps, and as you can hear it starts screaming. And the way to stop that now is to, for example, put it down, that's the way to switch it off, and then you can put it upright again to turn it on. However, sometimes, for example, if you hit uh, something uh, bump, it will not disable because it keeps staying, well, not upright, but it's not fully horizontal, so it will not disable. So in this video, um, I will make a, a small algorithm to solve this issue. For solving this issue, we will make use of the web interface of the robot. I will give a short introduction. So the ESP32 in this robot, uh, it's running a web server and we communicate with it via web sockets. So on the right we have a web page uh, on which we can edit the parameters of the controller and on the left we have a live plot of the parameters which we want to plot. For example, now we will tune the uh, D action of the controller. As you see, uh, it, uh, the response is now less damped uh, because the D parameter of the angle controller has been reduced. Now we increase it again and the response gets less damped. Uh, in the previous plot you saw a bit of oscillations and now it uh, is critically damped, so no oscillations and it's quite fast. But then if we keep on the increasing the D action or the derivative gain and it gets slower and slower. And the robot is quite robust so it will not get unstable very quickly but yeah, at some point it becomes too sluggish to control. So typically yeah, the default value works quite well. All in all, having this combination of live parameter tuning and data plotting and also logging is a very powerful tool for development. Now we will gather some data using the web interface. For this, we first click the enable logging button, then the start button, and now data will be written to a file. Note that all the variables are logged to the file, not just the ones that are selected in the web interface. Now we move the robot around. Currently I'm using it with the remote control and before I moved it around by hand. We use this data set to make sure that the algorithm doesn't trip uh, while we are driving around normally. After logging is complete, we click the export button and then we have a data file. The data file is then moved to the data folder and we give it a useful name such that you can recognize it later on. With the data stored, we can now develop the algorithm. For this, we use Python. And first, let me tell you a bit about the controller structure of the robot. Here, we have a block diagram of the control structure. Angle controller in the center is what keeps the robot upright. The robot angle is measured and is then the input to the angle PID controller. A set point for the angle controller is generated either by the position or the speed PID controller. If there is no user input, the position controller will demand an angle, such that the robot moves back to position 0. Similarly, if a user input is given, the speed controller will demand an angle, such that the robot starts moving at the desired speed. Now, back to the angle controller. Based on the difference between the set point and the actual measured angle, the input, the error is calculated as the difference between the two signals. The angle controller then figures out how to control the stepper motors to reduce the error of the angle to zero. Normally the error should always go to zero, otherwise the robot would be falling. This we can use for our fault detection algorithm. If the error is non-zero for too long, then the robot has fallen. In Python, we first specify the data folder, and then we list all of the files in that folder. 
As you can see, we have four files and the last one of them is the file we just recorded. Now we select the file, in this case the latest one. We define the column names and then read the CSV into Python into a data frame variable. We now define the variables of the angle controller, being the set point, the input and the error signals, as defined earlier in the block diagram. From the error signal we compute the error integral, and we do this only when the angle controller is active. It is active if its output is not exactly zero. If the controller is active, we add the current error multiplied by the time step to the integral, and otherwise we reset the integrator. Now comes the actual algorithm, and it's very simple. Basically, we take the absolute value of the error integral. If this is larger than the predefined threshold, we have a detection of a fall. The algorithm is now tested with the earlier collected data files. In the upper plot, we see the set point, the input, and the error signals. At some point, you see that the error gets quite large and the variable is being put down manually. We see then in the second plot the error integral. And in the first disabling action, it stays under the limit. In the second one, it goes above, and the fall is detected. This is okay as the robot is being disabled, anyways. We now load another file. This is normal driving around, similar to the previous file. And as you can see, no false positive is uh, triggered, so the fall detection never triggers. In the next file, I have on purpose introduced step loss, and as you can see, the error keeps increasing here, so at some point the fault detection algorithm kicks in. So it works here as it is supposed to work. As demonstrated, we can quickly develop a robust algorithm. This shows the power of wireless data logging and the collection of the data set. We can directly test if the algorithm works and see how robust it is. Well, normally you would have to upload, make a small change, upload, etc. And it would take way longer. Let's just the coding practice now. You see that if the robot is being treated unfair, it will start crying. But it has grown in wisdom as well. When it recognizes its actions do not afflict any change to its situation, it will stop crying. In other words, the algorithm works. And you can see that if we drive around normally, the algorithm doesn't trip, so we do not get any false positives. Now is also a good moment to show another nice feature of this robot, self-writing. As said in the start of this video, this robot, the current version, has a lower center of gravity compared to the first generation. And this helps us to turn a bug into a feature. As you can see, if the robot does a head roll, it's all self writes for some magical reason. And I think this is because the gyroscope is saturated and then it slowly resets uh, and at some point it will think it's upright, but it, no, it's not and it will self write. Implementing self writing is very simple. On a remote controller, we simply add a button that switches on the control loop while the robot is lying flat. No modifications are needed to the controller structure or the PID gains. This feature is very nice. Instead of walking to the robot for helping it stand up, I can sit behind my PC all the time, like a true nerd. And also, it adds to the personality of the robot. I hope you enjoyed watching this somewhat longer video. Uh, if you have any feedback or suggestions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.